Hi peeps, today I'm going to show you how to make water texture in Clip Studio Paint using your very own materials. This picture right here was gifted to me by a friend of mine, it's a photograph. It's a pho photograph of a little pond that connects to a small river and this is the part where the river meets the pond so the shape of the water it's very attractive right it was very attractive for me and because it has this fluidity this shines this movement that i wanted to portray and um, today i'm going to show you how to make a texture out of this so you can use them in your illustrations uh, first and foremost this is not the whole picture i just grabbed like the most fluid um, wave <laughs> that i could find because as water is, it's uh, very fluid, but it doesn't go just one way. See, this wave goes this way, this one goes this way, and this goes this way. It's all about the currents or the countercurrents. So the first thing that I did was actually show the grid. I use a grid based on centimeters and do a um, vector layer. Why a vector layer? Because I wanted to have control of each of the lines individually to be very precise on it. And I constructed the general shape that I wanted to use. And once I had the general shape using the most basic pen, the G pen, using this one specifically for the whole texture to have very solid lines that can be colored afterwards. And I'm going to show you how you are going to color them or how they can be used on an illustration that I already made. It's an illustration of a sea, as you can see, with some islands. And how you can use it on a new illustration in itself. But first, let me show you how it's done. First, you create the basic shape. And then after you created the basic shape, what I did was that I deactivated the grid. I turned it into a raster layer because it's more comfortable for me that way. And I copied two times. Why two times? If it's this is the medium, the medium set of the perspective, there's a farther set of the perspective and a closer one. So for one of them, for the Um, farthest away it has to be a little bit smaller so I literally resize it a little bit and then important part I flip it horizontally still check so the lines barely touch And I do exactly the same for the second one, just that it's going to be in the closer perspective. So I'm going to make that slightly bigger, not slightly smaller, but also I'm going to flip it horizontally. And once it's there touching there, see, I make it slightly bigger. So it seems more fluid. It not just like a pattern. Why is this baseline work important and necessary? So you can check that both corners, the beginning of the texture and the end of the texture, ends up in the same place. So there's not a cut and everything is very fluid and you can use it as an overall texture. I prefer to use it as a brush and precisely because you're going to use it or you could use it as a brush. Brush this technique or a texture is important that it's a square canvas. Okay. So first, I started with the shadows to be able to apply them from the original picture. I lowered the opacity so I could see where the shadows should be, and I placed them overall. Same with the shines or the brights of it. Why two textures in one for one fluidity? Because in water, the, the shadows reflect colors and the shines and the highlights do as well. So they have to be of different color for this specific texture 
to work in itself. So once I had it, I erased the guides, sort of saying, and I turn the textures, have to convert them one at a time. It's important because if not, they collapse in each other into an image material. And the second one, we also convert it into an image material. Once that is done, we go into the material layer section and literally we go into all materials, image material, and we simply grab it and drop it. After dropping it, we have to select it, go into the settings of it, the properties of it, have the scale up and down has to be enabled and we have to also use it for the brush tip shape to enable it. And that way we will be able to use it as a brush tip and also as the texture in itself. Once that's done, to create a brush, it's quite simple. I'm going to show you now how to do so. Let me get this back to the place I normally use it. And in a normal canvas, white canvas, here we have it. We go into a texture, texture or the brushes side. And if I want a pattern, so uh, like, let's say this one, in which it's one of the base ones for uh, Clip Studio, that it is repeated the pattern one next to the other and it's fluid in itself, we can simply duplicate it, duplicate the subtool, put another name, and the important part is that we go into the settings of it, we go into the brush tip of it, and we change it. It's as simple as we change it. It selects us all the images. We search for the one we have. C shines, select it. It changes it. And that would be it. Now, why it doesn't show this um, jumps between them? Because you have to be careful with which uh, brush you copy the settings off. For example, this one wouldn't be appropriate. Which one would I recommend you? This one that also comes with and can be found in Clip Studio, in which the fluidity of the image stays. See? That's what I did and that's how it works. So I grab, create a special ruler. And what I would recommend you is to have two different vector um, layers. Why two different vector layers? One for the shines. And one for the shadows. Sorry. Has to be exactly the same size of brush. If not, it's not going to work. Why different? So you can match them. You can synchronize exactly where they are for this to work properly. And once you have it, you can simply rasterize them and change the color. For example, I want the shadows to be a deep blue. I lock the transparent pixel and I shape them in color them in deep blue. And I want the shines of it to be ah oh, sorry, I did it the other way around. <laughs> so I want the shadows to be a deep blue and I want the shines of it to be of a bright blue. See? That way you have fluidity and adaptability to your wave texture. And how do you apply it to a proper um, illustration in itself? 
for example, here we have my illustration of some islands based on how long islands. And for the C, what I did, the C, what I did was first I set up a gradient for the C, gradient of colors of how I wanted to portray it. Uh, the clearest to the background, the most saturated to the foreground. And I included some shapes of water based on currents, some shines based on the very white clouds that are above in the sky, the reflection of the islands, and to give it that little extra, precisely the water texture in which we have the sea shadow texture, sea, deeper color, and the sea shine texture, or the sea bright texture. As you can see, it looks very natural in itself. It's not forced because I use different colors for each of them. And because I also blend the colors in the um, reflections of the water so the texture could be seen but it wasn't over it otherwise it would look too artificial too forced and well this technique can be applied not only to water it can be applied to any kind of texture sand rock uh, even leather or even skin if you are patient enough to do the pores and this is my tutorial i hope you peeps like it and if you do, please remember to like, favorite, and subscribe. I'm going to try to upload more content as soon as possible. Thank you very much for watching.